Welcome back everyone. In our previous video, we saw how we could actually take a geometric series and find a rational function for which it represents, but typically the direction is going to go the other way around. If we start off with a, uh, with a rational function, can we find a geometric series which represents it? And on what values of x does it represent? What is, what is the associated interval of convergence? The interval of convergence will give us where does the rational function equal its power series representation? So we, we have to play around with the geometric series formula, right? So we get this a over one minus r is equal to our geometric series, uh, right? Uh, which simplifying, simplifying just one thing here, if we start the series at n equals zero, if we start this at n equals zero, then we're going to get that as the sum goes from n equals zero to infinity, uh, we're going to get r to the n, and this will equal one over one minus r. And so that's this is this is the basic template we're going to use to try to force things uh, to work in our favor right here. So comparing comparing this original rational function with our target rational function here, we see that we want to take this positive x squared and set that equal to negative r. That is to say, we need that x squared equals negative r. And that's because of the disconnect. We have a positive here and a minus there. Or in other words, we should say that r is equal to negative x squared. And so we make that substitution. With that substitution in mind, we see that 1, plus, one over 1 plus x squared is equal to the geometric series starting at n equals 0. Unless you have a strong reason to do otherwise, start your geometric series at 0. We're going to take the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, and we replace the r with a negative x squared. And then this will be raised to the nth power. And that's that's all really have to get here, and in which case we can simplify it a little bit. n equals 0 to infinity of the sum. We're going to get negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. So notice this is going to be an alternating series, an alternating geometric series. In expanded form, this would look like 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th minus x to the 6th plus x to the 8th minus x to the 10th. And then the pattern just kind of continues on and on and on and on here. Notice what we're getting is we're getting this infinite series where the coefficient is always positive or negative, positive, negative. And it'll alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And we also only grab the even powers of x. So we don't have any odd powers. So we have x to the 0, x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is the general formula for our uh, geometric series. We can see it right here. Uh, but as it sometimes is useful, we can write it in an expanded form like this. But even still, we still have to figure out where, where is equality here? Where, where does equality hold? Sometimes we use this equal sign very, very loosely, right, with functions, because there's these variables x. But equality can only happen when the left side and the right side are both defined. Now, the left-hand side right here, it's, it's defined for any real number x, but this geometric series, on the other hand, it's only defined for certain values of x, its interval of convergence. Now, because of our ratio being negative x squared, we can see very quickly that we want the absolute value of r, aka negative x squared. We want this to be less than 1. Well, since you're taking absolute value, the, the negative sign really does nothing here. We need the absolute value of x squared to be less than 1. And again, if you're squaring, or if you're taking the absolute value of a square, that's the same thing as the square of the absolute value, uh, in which case we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. When we take the square root of both sides. So we still need that x needs to be between negative 1 and 1, or in other words, the interval of convergence is from negative 1 to 1. Um, I do want to mention that when it comes to a geometric series, uh, a geometric power series, we don't actually need to use the ratio test to find the radius of convergence. Uh, because it is a geometric series. The radius of convergence is always going to be derived uh, from this observation. The absolute value of r is less than 1. And that typically leads to a simpler calculation than what's associated with the ratio test. And so what we've now done is we've found a power series representation. It's right here for our function 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we know that this equality will be valid so long as x is between negative 1 and 1.